We are once again here on our YouTube prayer channel to pray for you and with you. Using the powerful psalms that have the potential to bring about a transformative change in your life when prayed with unwavering faith. Something both in the spiritual realm and within your own life is bound to occur. I am certain that you're not listening to us by mere chance. In matters of God, there is no coincidence. Either He brings about occurrences or He permits them. If you have come across this video, it's because God willed for you to find it, He orchestrated your presence here. And I am certain of it. Perhaps you are here because someone shared it, or maybe you were browsing through YouTube and stumbled upon this program, this video. It's not by chance, God knows that you greatly need these prayers. In this moment, I urge you to type your name in the comments and beside it. Write, God will bless, prosper, and protect me. Enter your name, and beside it, declare, God will bless, prosper, and protect me. You understand that when we pray these powerful psalms, which we'll do shortly, you shouldn't leave the video. But before we proceed, for those of you who are new to our channel, those who are here for the first time, take a moment. Right below, you'll see a red button that says, subscribe. Please subscribe to our channel. On the side, you'll find the notification bell. Simply press the bell and then select all notifications. Because this way, every time these prayers go live, you will be the first to be notified. A reminder to everyone. When you pray, when you seek, when you place your problems in God's hands, believe and be certain that He indeed can bring change, He can transform all those who pray. These psalms are blessed, something happens in the lives of those who recite them. That's why I ask you, take a moment now and share these prayers with someone else. Down below, there's also a button that says, Like. Please click that button to show your appreciation for the video. It's crucial to reach more and more people. Alright, more sheep. The larger the flock in the kingdom of God, the better it is for you. For those of you listening, you'll be even more blessed. I am certain of this. Plant this in your heart. God will make my miracle happen. If you can type this affirmation in the comments, God will make my miracle happen. We're going to be here at this moment, praying these powerful psalms. Stay with the video, don't leave, and I am confident you will be greatly blessed. Psalm 23 is the psalm of prosperity, the one that changes the scenery of our lives. Everyone who prays it receives the blessing of prosperity and a change of circumstances. What's going wrong starts going right. So, I urge you at this moment, pray this psalm with me. Psalm 23 will bring prosperity to you. It will refresh your soul and provide the relief you need. In fact, if you have any requests to make, take this opportunity and leave your prayer request in the comments. Psalm 23 goes like this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah! You can say, O, oh, glory to God, right there in your home. This psalm is a powerful psalm that brings prosperity, opens doors, and shields a person from the evil eye of envy. It brings immediate prosperity to the person. And when we talk about prosperity, it's not just about money. In every area of your life where you lay your hands, you will prosper. Wherever you set your feet, you will prosper. Repeat in the comments, God will prosper me. With strong faith, God will prosper me. I am certain that you are there, listening to me. You will be the happiest person in this world, 
the happiest person in your home, in this land. I am sure of it. Another psalm is Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a psalm of great protection. It holds the power to unravel all. Listen carefully, hear this, dear one, Psalm 91. It is so potent that those who pray it, those who recite it, whoever prays it in the way they want to speak, receives the protection of the Most High and also receives a significant change in their life scenery. Your landscape will change, the battles that are coming upon your life will crumble, and just as the psalm itself says, Though a thousand may fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, I shall not be harmed. You will not be harmed by anything or anyone, because the Lord God is with you. He will protect you, He will protect you. Type this affirmation in the comments. Type it. God will protect me, for the Lord is with you. Those who pray. Those who meditate. Those who read this psalm receive protection and also have the power to undo all the ties of their spiritual life. Perhaps you suffer from something that is not material but spiritual. And through this psalm, you, dear sheep, will be honored and blessed by the Lord. Psalm 91 goes like this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings, you shall take refuge, His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high, because he knows my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will rescue him and honor him. I will satisfy him with long life and show him my salvation. Hallelujah! Say, Glory to God, for this psalm. It has the power to protect those who pray, those who meditate upon it. There are people, and many households. For instance, that leave the Bible open in the living room or bedroom. Precisely in these Psalms. It is one of the strongest and most powerful in the Holy Bible. That's why I tell you to type in the comments with faith. God will protect me, because the protection of Psalm 91 over your life is granted by the Most High. You are under the shadow of the Almighty, under the shadow of the Omnipotent. The God who takes away is the God who gives, the God who permits or makes things happen. So be at peace. There are new things coming into your life. You can say, Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am certain of it. Another psalm that we will read, we will pray with faith, with faith. Psalm 70 is a psalm seeking divine aid, a psalm calling for God's help. The assistance of the Almighty is a psalm asking for Him to hasten to our rescue. Type in the comments, I need God's help. I need God's help. Psalm 70 Those who pray, those who read, those who meditate, receive immediate assistance, receive an immediate miracle. So pray along with me. Psalm 70 goes like this, Hasten, O God, to deliver me, make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded who seek my life. Let them turn back and be covered with disgrace, 
those who rejoice in my misfortune. Let them retreat in shame. Those who say, Well done, well done, take pleasure in you, and all who seek your salvation and love it. Always say, God be praised. I am poor and needy. O God! Hurry to watch over me, for you are my support and my liberator, Lord. Do not delay. Hallelujah! This psalm. It is strong, powerful, for it is a prayer that seeks divine aid in difficult moments of your life. What is your challenging moment? Speak to God there, Lord, hasten to help me. Lord, hurry, come quickly, do not delay. I need you, for there are many people. There are many people who look at you and treat you with disgrace, saying, well done, and laughing at you. But God, he will come to your aid and show everyone that He is the mighty God who is with you, who has never, ever left you and never will. Type in the comments, God, come to my aid. I am certain that He will come to your aid, that He will help you. The next psalm we will read is a strong psalm. It is a psalm that brings into our lives, my brother and my sister, the protection of the Almighty. He is the one who guards us, he is the one who aids us. And this protection is not like the protection of Psalm 91. It is not a differentiated protection, because the one who guards you does not sleep, the one who guards you does not sleep, be sure of that. The psalm we will read now is Psalm 121. It is a psalm that brings into your life, that brings to you. Pay attention, this is a psalm that brings to you urgent, immediate aid. It complements Psalm 70, Psalm 121. Pray with me, repeat in your home. It goes like this, I lift my eyes to the hills, where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip, the one who watches over you does not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, in the daytime, the sun will not harm you, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all harm, He will protect your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Hallelujah! It is the Lord who watches over you. He does not sleep. He sees everything. Everything they are plotting against your life, everything they are scheming against you, God sees it all. Prepare yourself, dear sheep, because the best from God is yet to come. Prepare yourself, dear sheep, for something is about to happen in your life that will completely change this situation, completely transform your life, completely alter the entire scenario. Perhaps you're asking, Lord, is it for me? Is it? Isn't it for you? Yes, it is for you. I am certain of it. I am certain of it. The next psalm we will read, pray, meditate, or recite, in the way you choose to express it, is Psalm 40. It is a psalm asking for deliverance from God. It's a psalm that brings calmness to you. Wait confidently on the Lord. It goes like this, I waited patiently for the Lord. He leaned toward me and heard my plea. When I cried out for help, He lifted me from the pit of destruction. Out of the mud and mire, He set my feet upon a rock, steadying my steps and putting a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear, and they will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who places his trust in the Lord and does not turn to the proud, nor to those who follow lies. O oh Lord my God, the wonders you have done and your plans for us are numerous, none can compare with you. I desire to declare and speak of them, but they are more than can be numbered. You do not desire sacrifices or offerings, you have opened my ears. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here I am, I have come, it is written about me in the scroll. I delight to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly, I do not seal my lips, as you know, 
Lord. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart, I speak of your faithfulness and salvation. I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord, may your love and faithfulness always protect me. For innumerable evils have surrounded me, my iniquities have overtaken me, and I am unable to see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Hurry, O Lord, to deliver me, come quickly, O Lord, to help me. Let those who seek my harm be put to shame and covered with disgrace. Turn back, let those who rejoice in my misfortune be covered in shame. May they endure troubles due to their ignominy. Those who say, Well done, and, Well done, take pleasure in you, and let all who seek your salvation rejoice. Always say, Praise the Lord. I am poor, Lord, and in need, yet you care for me. You are my refuge, my liberator. Do not delay, O my God. Hallelujah. Psalm 40 is a plea for help from the Almighty. A call for deliverance, and it teaches each of us to trust in Him, to believe that He will perform the miracle. He will make the miracle happen in my life and in yours as well. Let not your heart be troubled. Do not be discouraged or afraid, for the Lord is with you. He is our help and a present help in times of distress, pain, and adversity. He is with us. Now, we will pray Psalm 128, asking God for happiness in our family, happiness in our home. Your family will be blessed. It goes like this, Blessed is the one who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor, blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children will be like olive shoots around your table. This is how the man who fears the Lord will be blessed. May the Lord bless you from Zion, so that you may see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Hallelujah. In conclusion, I want to ask you to share and engage. Subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, listen to these psalms and I am confident that your life will change, your life will change. I want to offer this prayer for you, for your home, for your family, and I am certain that these psalms will transform your entire story, your entire life. I am certain of this, so don't miss listening to them, and come back to the video. Return to the video for 7 days. If possible, listen and listen and listen, because that's what will bring the blessings of God into your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's offer our prayer, entrust our lives into the hands of the Lord, my Father, my Lord. Blessed be your name. It is at this moment that I pray, entrusting every sheep into your hands. Father, Lord, take care, my God, take care of this man, take care of this woman, bring peace to their lives, my God. Bring a spiritual renewal to this life that they will never forget, Father. Lord, you alone have the power, only you can restore, heal, perform miracles. I beseech you, my God, I ask with all my heart that this woman, that this man, may be honored, blessed, kept safe from all harm. Father, if there are people here whose lives, my God, are shattered, whose lives, my Father, seem finished, May you come to restore, may you bring deliverance, for we know that only in you is their hope. Lord, intervene providentially in the lives of your people. Repeat it in your home. Dear sheep, say, yes, Lord, intervene providentially in my life, Lord, make the miracle happen in my life. My God, you are the one who can restore my marriage. You are the one who can open a door for me. You are the one who can work the miracle in my life, and I trust in you. I surrender my entire household. Say, dear sheep, make this prayer, I surrender my family, prosper me, bless me, open doors in my life, open doors for my family, bless my home, bless my life. I ask you this, Father, 
because you are a God who performs miracles. Lord, instill in my heart the desire to worship and glorify you. Lord, prosper my household. My Father, protect me from any and all harm, bring about a change in my life circumstances, bring prosperity into my life. Don't tire of asking God for prosperity. No, dear sheep, because he will make it happen. My Father, hear each prayer. Lord, every person who has prayed, who is praying. O oh Father, I know that you have power. I know that you can do all things. So please, my God, refresh this soul, work the miracle, transform these lives, Father. In the spiritual realm, let the enemy fall to the ground. In the spiritual realm, let this malevolent force fall to the ground, Father. So that there may be light, so that there may be salvation, so that there may be peace in this home, in this life. In this way, my Father, we shall glorify you. In this manner, we shall lift you up. Bring refreshment to our lives, bring refreshment to our family. In the name of Jesus. This is how I pray, Father, this is what I ask of you, Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you, dear sheep, who believe and receive, say Amen and say thanks be to God. Amen. May God honor you. May God bless you mightily. Share this video. Send it to all your family members. Share it with all prayer groups, for it will assist many people. Alright? A heartfelt embrace to you. May you remain in the peace of the Lord Jesus. I greet all my brothers and sisters with a holy and sweet peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Today, we will pray Psalm 7, and we believe that this prayer will be a blessing to you and your entire family. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Also, feel free to share your prayer requests, and we will always pray for your life. We read the comments and continuously pray for all prayer requests. Share this prayer with a friend, and it will surely be a blessing in their life. Let's pray this prayer, and God will certainly bless us in a special way. Let's read Psalm 7 and see what God wants to speak to us through this beautiful psalm written by David. It says in verse 1 of Psalm 7, O Lord my God, in you I put my trust, save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me. In this verse, the psalmist starts the psalm by asking the Lord for deliverance and affirming that his trust is in God. Our trust should be in God, not in human strength. It is God who performs miracles, surprises us, and showers us with rich blessings. Our trust must be in God because He is the one who delivers us. In verse 1, the psalmist asks God to deliver him from those who persecute him. Perhaps you are experiencing a moment of persecution. Sometimes, persecution is not physical, it can be spiritual, in the spiritual realm. But God is saying through this psalm that He will deliver us, protect us, and be with us. The psalmist makes this plea and request in verse 1, O Lord my God, in you I put my trust, save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me. In verse 2, he continues, saying, Lest they tear me like a lion, rending me in pieces, while there is none to deliver. In verse 3, he says, O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is iniquity in my hands. In verse 4, he says, If I have repaid evil to him who was at peace with me, or have plundered my enemy without cause. In these verses, 3, 4, and 5, the psalmist is justifying himself before God. He is saying, Lord, if I have done something wrong, let me pay for that mistake. But here, the psalmist is presenting himself to the Lord, 
stating that he hadn't done anything wrong. However, if by any chance he had, he asks God to judge him and bring justice. So, the psalmist is seeking God's justification in his life, asking for God's mercy. In verse 6, the psalmist says, Arise, O Lord, in your anger, lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies, rise up for me to the judgment you have commanded. In verse 6, the psalmist is asking God to intervene, to act and execute judgment as he has commanded. The disciples were in the boat, and the wind was strong. The boat was about to sink, and the disciples were afraid of dying at sea. Meanwhile, Jesus was sleeping in the stern of the boat. The disciples woke Jesus up, saying, Master, wake up. We are perishing. This expression from the psalmist in verse 6, Arise. O Lord, is the same expression the disciples were using in that storm. They were saying, Wake up, Master, because we are about to perish. The Bible says that Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. Jesus then rebuked the disciples, saying, O oh, you of little faith, why are you afraid? Who is in the boat with you is greater than the winds and the storms. The one in your boat is Jesus. The winds can blow in your boat, the storms, and the waves of the sea can try to sink your boat, your life, but Jesus is in the boat with you, and this boat will not fall, it will not sink. That's what the psalmist is saying, Arise, O Lord, in your anger, lift yourself up because of the rage of my oppressors, awake for me to the judgment you have commanded. The psalmist is asking, Wake up, Father, help me, Lord, because David was facing a very difficult situation. He was a man of war, constantly engaged in battles, and his enemies wanted to destroy him at any cost. That's why David is crying out, asking the Lord for mercy and deliverance, requesting that God brings the answer against those opposing him, rising up against him, persecuting him. This is a clear response that God cares about our feelings. If someone is persecuting you or slandering you, be calm. Put it in God's hands because the answer comes from the Lord. That's what the psalmist is expressing in Psalm 7. In verse 7, the psalmist says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. In these verses, the psalmist continues justifying himself before God. In verse 9, the psalmist says that God is just and tests the hearts and minds, meaning God knows our hearts and minds. God knows you fully, deeply, completely. God knows you inside out. God knows you inside and out. He knows your limits. He knows how far you can go. He knows how much you can bear. God knows the extent of your strength, and I want to tell you that you are stronger than you imagine. You are a warrior woman, a warrior man. You have faced so many battles, so many problems and adversities in life, and look, you are still standing. God protects us. In verse 10, the psalmist says, My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is your shield, my sister. God is your shield, my brother. Every arrow launched against you hits this shield and falls. Every curse thrown at you hits this shield and falls. Every plague that can be cast upon you hits this shield and falls. Before you stands a powerful shield, and the name of that shield is God. Nothing can penetrate the shield of our protection, and that's why the psalmist in verse 10 of Psalm 7 says, my shield is with God, who
who saves the upright in heart. In verse 11, God is described as a just judge, a God who is angry every day. In this verse, we can see that God has emotions. He can be sad, he can be happy, he can be angry. We can see this in verse 11 where it says, God is a just judge, a God who is angry every day. So we can see that the last thing we want is to fall into the hands of an angry God. When God is angry, the best thing we can do is cry out for His mercy. Anyone who harms you angers God. Anyone who fights against you angers God. The Bible says that God became angry with Egypt because they mistreated His chosen people, and God sent ten plagues upon Egypt. That was God's anger directed at Egypt because they mistreated His chosen people. So anyone who mistreats you, anyone who rises against you, will have to face the wrath of an angry God. That's why the Bible says, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. You are anointed by God. You are anointed by the Lord. Whoever touches you, touches God. Whoever touches you will have to face the wrath of the Father. That's why we don't need to respond to those who rise against us. The Lord answers for us. Of course, we are taught to love our enemies. Jesus taught us to pray for those who persecute us. But that doesn't mean that divine justice will not be served. God is love, but He is also just, as the Bible says. This Psalm, Psalm 7, speaks of divine justice. That's why in verse 11, the psalmist says, God is a just judge, a God who is angry every day. And in verse 12, the psalmist continues, saying, If a man does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. He has bent his bow and made it ready. The bow is prepared and equipped here to show us that when a man does not convert, he blasphemes against God. The wrath of the Lord is set before this man, which is why verse 12 tells us that if a man does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. Throughout history, we have seen many characters who blasphemed and spoke ill of God, and they paid a high price. We can see King Nebuchadnezzar who blasphemed before God and was made to eat grass. We can also see King Herod, who did not give glory to God. One should never mess with a man of God or a woman of God who lives a life of prayer. Don't touch a woman who spends her time on her knees praying. Don't mess with a man who spends his time on his knees praying because God has a stake in their lives. And when you and I fight against a man of God or a woman of God, we pay a heavy price. If you are a praying woman or a praying man, you have a protective shield before you, and whoever touches you, touches God himself. Psalm 7 shows us and reveals this truth to us. Of course, we do not need to and should not wish harm upon anyone. We should not desire ill for anyone. However, the Lord's justice must be served. Those who speak ill of God, those who blaspheme the Lord, cannot go unpunished. God punishes those who rise against the chosen ones of the Father, and you are chosen by God. You are chosen by God, and He is the one who guarantees your response when someone defames you, when someone speaks ill of you. You don't need to respond because it is God who will answer for you. Verse 12 and verse 13 state that if a man does not convert, he challenges God's sword. His bow is already armed, and he has prepared deadly weapons. He has aimed his fiery arrows against the persecutors. Look at verse 13, he, referring to the man who does not convert, has prepared deadly weapons. 
The text is saying that God has prepared deadly weapons for those who do not convert, and he will put his fiery arrows into action against the persecutors. The worst thing in the world is to be an enemy of God. It is written in the scriptures that whoever loves the world is an enemy of God. Those who rise against the Lord's anointed are enemies of God, and anyone who opposes you is an enemy of God. While we should ask for mercy, the justice lies with God. His will is carried out. In verse 14, it says, Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. Verse 15 is very interesting. It says, He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. So, whoever prepares a pit for you, whoever sets a trap for you, will fall into the same trap they prepared for your life. The one who dug the pit will fall into the pit they made for you. That's what this verse is telling us. Verse 15 is telling us that he dug a pit and made it deep, and fell into the hole he had made. In other words, whoever prepared traps and pits against your life will fall into the same pit, the same trap they prepared for you. This reminds me of Daniel. The Bible tells us that Daniel was a man of prayer, praying three times a day. The adversaries and persecutors of Daniel devised an evil plan to destroy his life by persuading the king to issue a decree that anyone who worshipped another god would be thrown into the den of lions. They spread false information that Daniel was worshipping another god. As the king had made the decree and could not revoke his words, these men conspired against Daniel because they were his opponents. They successfully executed their wicked plan against Daniel and threw him into the den of lions. The Bible states that Daniel spent the entire night in the den, and when the den was opened, the king saw Daniel alive among the lions. The ones who had thrown Daniel into the den were devoured by the lions themselves. Those who plot against your life, those who scheme against you, will fall into their own trap. So, do not be afraid and do not worry. Nothing is better than taking one day at a time. Remember Joseph, the same ones who threw him into a pit, the ones who sold him for twenty pieces of silver, ended up needing Joseph in the future when he became a governor in Egypt. And God will do the same in your life and in my life. The Lord will honor you in the presence of those who persecute and mistreat you. Therefore, do not fear. In verse 15, the psalmist is saying that he dug a pit and made it deep, and fell into the hole he had made. And in verse 16, it goes even further, saying that his mischief will return upon his own head and his violence will come down on his own skull. The psalmist is saying that the violence of the persecutors will fall upon themselves. And in verse 17, the psalmist concludes the psalm by saying, I I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praises to the name of the Most High. It is clear that we must follow the teachings of Jesus, love our neighbors as ourselves, and pray for those who persecute and mistreat us. However, this does not mean that God's justice will not be served. This Psalm 7 shows us and reveals that God is the one who is just, a righteous judge who judges our causes. At this moment, I want to offer a special prayer for you. You who are facing persecutions, slander, defamation, and going through difficult and complicated times in your life. You who need a special blessing in your family and your home. I want to pray for your life and ask God to have mercy on you and grant you a special blessing and victory. May the name of Jesus be glorified in your victory and testimony that you will soon share. Let us pray. Sovereign God, 
Eternal Father, Creator of the ends of the earth, we have just read Psalm 7. God, we can confirm your righteousness recorded in this psalm. In this moment, O God of mercy and new beginnings, we stand in your presence because we trust in your power and mercy. In your outstretched hand towards us. Have mercy on us, Lord. We present before you all the followers. All the slanderers, all the gossipers who speak ill of our lives. We place them all in your hands, and we ask that you have mercy. But also that you demonstrate that you are with us. Show, Lord, that you are a God of justice who loves truth and righteousness. We ask you, God, to bring the answer for us. God, answer for us, so that we do not have to respond with our own strength, for we have you as our advocate. Your word says that you are our advocate, that our fight is not against flesh and blood. Therefore, we ask that every force of evil using people against us may fall to the ground under the shadow of your omnipotence. We ask for your blessing upon our lives, our homes, our families, O Lord. May you bring an immediate answer in the lives of your sons and daughters. We ask for your mercy. We ask, Lord God, for your forgiveness and your grace. We forgive, Lord. We forgive all those who have offended us. We forgive those who persecute us. We release your forgiveness, Lord, upon the lives of those who speak ill of us, upon the lives of those who persecute and slander us. We forgive. We release forgiveness upon their lives. May you show, Lord, that you are with us, that you are a God of wonders, a God of awe-inspiring power. Just as you exalted Joseph, not as an act of vengeance against his brothers, but to save the people of Israel, may you exalt us, O God. Not to trample upon those who have trampled upon us, but that we may extend our hand to those who have hurt us. May we release your love and show them that we are different, that we do not repay evil with evil, but with kindness. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your blessing, your providence, and your answer, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask and we thank you. Amen. Thank God, my sister and my brother, and rest assured, simply forgive those who have spoken ill of you. Forgive those who have mocked you. Forgive, because they do not know what they are doing. Be at peace, and forgive. Because God will show them that He, the Lord, is with you. God will show all those who have mocked you that He is with you. But you don't need to seek revenge, you don't need to repay evil with evil. You need to repay evil with goodness. So, leave it in God's hands because the answer comes from the Lord. Amen. And remember, you were born to conquer and live out every promise of God. The Lord is with you. Thanks be to God who grants us victory, and may God bless you, victorious ones, in Christ Jesus. Today, we will be praying Psalm 20. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe and activate the notifications. Share this video with a friend, as it will surely be a blessing for you and for someone else's life. In this prayer, we will be praying this powerful psalm, Psalm 20. Verse 1 says, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble, may the name of the God of Jacob defend you. The psalmist declares that God will hear you on the day of trouble. What is this day of trouble? It's the day when you feel sad, downcast, 
and when you experience failure. It's the day when you think that perhaps God has forgotten about you. However, verse 1 of this psalm shows us that God will listen to us on the day of trouble, and the name of the God of Jacob will protect us. Do not fear the afflictions and problems that may come against you in life. Understand and comprehend that God is the one who protects and defends you. This declaration from the psalmist, David, clearly shows us that God can listen to you on the day of trouble, and the name of the God of Jacob will protect you. What is the name of the God of Jacob? God revealed himself to Moses in Exodus 3, saying, I am who I am. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When Moses asked for his name, God said to tell the people that, I am, has sent him. I am, means that God is everything that his people need him to be. If his people need bread, he is the bread of life. If his people need peace, he is peace. If his people need relief, he is the relief. If his people need forgiveness, he is forgiveness. If his people need healing, he is the healer. This is what God was telling Moses, I am. I am everything you need me to be. God is saying to you, I am everything you need me to be. If you need healing, I am your healing. If you need deliverance, I am your deliverance. If you need protection, I am your protection. The psalmist is saying, May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. Know that this powerful name protects your home and your family. It is absolute 24-hour protection from God in your life. You have a God who is a protector, a God who never sleeps. God is awake, watching over your life 24-7. Verse 2 of Psalm 20 tells us even more, May he send you help from his sanctuary and give you support from Zion. In this verse, we can see the blessing of God guarding and protecting us. The psalmist declares that help will come from God's sanctuary, from Zion. The divine promise for our lives is that the Lord will provide help and provision and will sustain us from Zion. God is your sustainer and your helper, always present in times of affliction and distress. Verse 3 also adds, May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. This verse quickly refers to your work routine. Yes, soon you will give God a different time through platforms and applications. It declares, Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. This means that every offering you give to God is remembered. No offering is in vain. When I talk about offerings, I mean offerings in all aspects of life. There is the offering of time when you dedicate your time to protect, help, and counsel someone. There is the offering of money when you assist the needy or support a project or work being done. To God, who remembers all our offerings and accepts our sacrifices, our fasts, our prayers, no sacrifice is in vain, no offering is in vain, and God certainly rewards those who do His work. This verse, verse 3, clearly shows us that. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. In verse 4, it says, May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. The psalmist declares that God will grant according to your heart's desire. There are other verses in the Bible that say, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. There are different types of victories that can come into our lives. There is the victory that we need, the victory that we deserve, and the victory that we desire. The victory that we need is the one that God gives us every day, providing deliverance, food on the table, 
clothes in the wardrobe, and sustenance. That's why the psalmist said, I have been young, and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. In other words, God will always grant you the blessing and victory that you need. There is also the victory that we deserve, the victory that comes to us based on our merits, and sometimes even when we don't deserve it, God still grants us victory. Why? Because that's called God's mercy and divine grace. And finally, there is the victory that we desire. I invite you to comment below and share what your heart desires. Make your prayer requests because we will also pray for them. Many people believe that God doesn't grant the desires of our hearts, but that is a big misconception. God does grant the desires of our hearts as long as those desires don't harm or hurt anyone else. If you have a desire to own a house, God can and, with faith, will give you that house. If you have a desire in your heart to have a car, God can and will open doors for you to obtain a car. If you desire restoration in your marriage, God can and will bring that restoration. If you are single and desire to get married, God can and will do it. God cares about our feelings. You serve a God who cares about what you feel. You serve a God who cares about your pain, your sorrows, and God cares about the desires of your heart, that's why the Bible says that God is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. Of course, the bridegroom cares about the desires of the bride. The Bible also says that we are children and God is our Father, and a father cares about the desires of his children. Jesus said, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Imagine how good and merciful God is. This verse 4 speaks to this, May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. That's why we need to have a mindset of faith. What is a mindset of faith? It's believing that the impossible will happen, believing in the supernatural, believing that you are born to overcome. Believing that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That is a mindset of faith, and that's why verse 4 of Psalm 20 says, May he grant you your heart's desire, fulfill all your plans. I ask you, my friend, what are your petitions before the Lord? What have you been asking God for in prayer, perhaps even tearfully? Verse 5 tells us even more. We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. This verse is beautiful and important in our lives. It says, we will rejoice in your salvation. We need to experience the joy of being saved. I believe that is the greatest conviction of a Christian, the joy of salvation. But it's not just the joy of salvation. The Lord wants to give you more. The second part of verse 5 says, May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. My friend, what are your petitions before the Lord? What have you been asking God in prayer, maybe even with tears? This verse 5 shows us that the Lord is willing to satisfy your request, no matter how impossible it may seem to you. That's why it is important for us to ask God. The psalmist shows us this in Psalm 20, and Jesus himself also tells us in Matthew 7. Ask, and it will be given to you, seek, and you will find, knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Know that your request before God is not in vain. Have this conviction in your soul. 
Verse 6 of Psalm 20 tells us. Chapter 20, And now the Lord saves his anointed one, he will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Look at this beautiful and marvelous verse, my brothers and sisters. This verse 6 of Psalm 20 is so beautiful. Let me read it again. Look at how beautiful it is. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed, he will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. First, God saves his anointed. Who is anointed by God? You are anointed by God. You, who are listening to me, are anointed of the Father. You are anointed of the Lord. The Lord has anointed you with spiritual oil. In those times, the anointing was oil prepared by the priest to consecrate objects and also people. Once a person was consecrated, they became anointed of God. And you, who are listening to me, are consecrated by the Father. You are consecrated by the Lord. The Lord has anointed you with spiritual oil. And verse 6 tells us, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. God saves those whom he consecrates, and you are saved by this consecration, by this divine grace in your life. Verse 6 also tells us, he will answer him from his holy heaven. It means that even though God is in heaven, in his glorious heaven, he will hear you from heaven. From the heavens, he listens to you. And with the saving strength of his right hand, because the right hand is the strong hand, right? My right arm, I will save you. And who is the right hand of God? It is Jesus, the saving strength, the saving power of the right hand is Jesus. Jesus is ready to save you, ready to lift you up, ready to restore you. And at this very moment, the Lord restores your strength, restores your energy, restores your joy, restores your happiness in the Lord. Verse 7 tells us, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. This verse 7 is also another beautiful verse. The psalmist David is saying, Some trust in chariots and horses which represent human strength and earthly resources, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots and others in horses. In those times, when an army went to war, they went with shields, with swords. They trusted their chariots, they trusted their horses, they trusted their weapons. And here, the psalmist is using a language of war. He is saying that some trust in chariots and others in horses. In the battles of life, in the wars of life, many people trust in their intelligence, in their abilities, in their attributes, in their tools. But the psalmist is saying, some trust in chariots and others in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. In other words, it's like saying, my trust is not in chariots or horses. My trust is not in the sword or the shield or the spear. My trust is in God who made the heavens and the earth. Trust in the Lord and not in man. Trust in God, trust in God. Do not trust in human weapons, do not trust in human attributes, because only God is salvation. And that's why in verse 8, the psalmist says, They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Oh, glory to God! This verse, this Psalm 20, is so beautiful, right? All the Psalms are beautiful, but this Psalm 20 and this verse 8 are marvelous. The verse 8 says, Let me read it again, they have bowed down and fallen. There are many people bowing down and falling. 
When they created the statue to be worshipped, the Bible says that Mishael, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down before the statue. The book of Daniel tells us this story. It actually shows that those who bow down to the world, those who bow down to sin, they are actually falling. That's why the text says in verse 8. Psalm 20, Stand firm and do not bow before sin, the system, or the world. Do not bow before the corruption of this world, the adulteries, or the lies. That's why many people are bowing to sin and falling. But we, we rise and stand upright. The world may bow down, but the church stands triumphantly in the presence of God. And you stand in the presence of the Lord. Remain standing in the strength of the Holy Spirit. In verse 9, it concludes with, Save us, Lord. Hear us when we call. Here, the psalmist makes a declaration and a request to God. Save us, Lord, as if to say, Come to our aid, bring relief to our souls, deliver us from this difficult time, so that we may remain standing in your presence. We are calling upon the King. Psalm 20 is a beautiful psalm that shows the psalmist's trust in God. It shows that many trust in chariots and horses, in their power and strength, but we trust in God, we trust in the Lord, and it is He who enables us to stand in His presence. I invite you to join me in praying the prayer of Psalm 20. Share your prayer requests in the comments below, what you desire from God. As Psalm 20 says, the Lord is interested in granting you the desires of your heart. Let us take hold of all the blessings recorded in this wonderful psalm, let us claim these blessings so that the name of the Lord may be glorified in our victories, glorified in our lives. The honor of God is coming to you, the blessings of the Lord are coming into your life. Let us pray, close your eyes, focus on God, and pray with me. Holy Spirit of Truth, we have just read and learned from this psalm. May I humbly ask for the blessings of Psalm 20 in our lives. We ask for your protection, O God, and that you keep us standing in your presence, for we believe that you are faithful to bring about the supernatural. O God, I am not asking for much, I am asking for what is necessary. In the name of Jesus, for this woman and this man who listens to me at this moment, pour out your blessings upon their lives. May the blessings of Psalm 20 be upon him and her, the beatitudes of this powerful psalm. May you grant, according to your will, the desires of the hearts of your servant and your servant, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the blessings of Psalm 20 come upon our lives, for many bow down and fall, but we will mention your name, Lord, your majestic, grand, infallible, and invincible name. We take possession of the blessings, Lord, of Psalm 20 in our lives. Enter with providence, grant victory to your people, open the closed doors, and bring forth the honor that comes from your glory, the honor that comes from your throne, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask and thank you, Amen, and thanks be to God. Take hold of each verse of this Psalm 20, believe that you were born to overcome. Many may bow down and fall, but we remain standing in the presence of the Lord. Repeat this phrase with me, I am standing in the presence of God. Say it again, I am standing in the presence of God. If you are a woman, say, I am a victorious woman in Christ Jesus. If you are a man, say, I am a victorious man in Christ Jesus. Take possession of your blessing and remember that you were born to overcome and live the promises of God in your life. I'll be ending here. 
a big hug from your friend, and may the peace of the Lord be in your heart. Before we pray and read Psalm 37 verse by verse, I want to invite you to share this psalm, this prayer, with a friend who also needs to hear the Word of God. Put your prayer request in the comments, I always read the comments and pray for all the requests, no matter how simple they may be. Make your prayer request, and we will present it before the Lord. Psalm 37 is a beautiful and meaningful psalm, just like the other psalms. Let us understand the significance of each verse and offer a prayer, seeking the blessings of Psalm 37 in our lives. Psalm 37 is straightforward to comprehend, so I will be precise and direct in explaining each verse. Verse 1 tells us not to be indignant because of evildoers or envy those who practice wickedness. The psalmist reminds us that we should distance ourselves from wrongdoers and not seek to emulate them. In verse 2, the psalmist explains why we should not admire or envy evildoers. They will be cut down like grass and wither like green plants. We can witness this happening every day, as those who practice wickedness are judged by God. For this reason, we should rejoice in being in the presence of the Lord. In verse 3, the psalmist declares, Trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. This verse is fascinating as it reveals that when we trust in God and do what is right, we will dwell in the land and be provided for abundantly. It is a testament to the faithfulness and provision of the Lord. Let us continue reading and meditating on Psalm 37, finding solace, guidance, and encouragement in its verses. Remember to share this psalm and prayer with others, as we all need the uplifting power of God's Word in our lives. Trust in the Lord, do good, and dwell in His blessings. May the message of Psalm 37 resonate deeply within our hearts, bringing us hope, strength, and peace. Truly, we shall be nourished. This reveals that prosperity awaits us not only in heaven but also here on earth. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, when Jesus teaches us to say, Your kingdom come, he is illustrating that the blessings of the heavenly kingdom should also be established here on earth. In verse 3, we witness this prosperity that God bestows upon those who trust in Him. Furthermore, in verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. This verse is truly marvelous. Let me read it once more. Look at how profound this revelation is, to delight in the Lord means to rest in Him, to trust Him wholeheartedly. The Word states that when we delight in the Lord, He will grant us the desires of our hearts. So whatever your heart desires, know that God is interested in fulfilling it. God is a loving Father who cares for us, understands us, and, like any loving Father, desires to see the happiness of His child. Thus, God wants your happiness too. In verse 5, it says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. This verse reminds me of Jesus' words in Matthew 6 verse 33, where He said, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. What are these things that Jesus was referring to? They include a home, work, family, marriage, prosperity, all these things will be added to you when you seek the kingdom of God and fully surrender your life to the Lord. I promise you, when you place all your paths in God's hands, 
He will work the supernatural miracle of blessings and prosperity in your life. That's what the psalm is all about. That's what verse 5 is conveying. May these verses touch your heart deeply, igniting a passionate trust in God's promises. Delight in Him, commit your way to Him, and experience the wonders He has in store for you. God's love and blessings will overflow, bringing joy and fulfillment to your life. It is speaking from chapter 37 of the book of Psalms, and it says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. In verse 6, it says, He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday Sunday. In verse 7, it continues, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him, do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. In verse 7, the psalmist advises us not to become indignant or envious of those who prosper on their path. We mustn't believe that the grass is greener on the other side, that someone else's life is better than ours. What we often witness today is people constantly comparing themselves to others. But don't compare yourself to anyone else. You are unique and exceptional. Don't compare your beauty, your blessings, or your possessions to others. That's what verse 7 is telling us, rest in the Lord, wait for Him, and don't be indignant because others are prospering on their path. Sometimes, people feel upset because their sister or brother got married while they haven't, or their neighbor bought a car while they haven't. I once received a message from a sister who said, my neighbor managed to renovate her house, and I haven't. I'm so sad. I told her, my sister, rest in the Lord. Don't be indignant. I precisely conveyed what verse 7 is saying. Don't feel upset because someone is prospering ahead of you. On the contrary, rejoice in your brother's victory. One day, you will be able to renovate your house, fulfill your dreams. We don't need to be saddened by others' prosperity while we wait. Know that God has the perfect timing, and at the right time, blessings will come into your life, prospering and blessing you immensely. So, don't despair, don't be saddened by those who prosper on their path. That's what the psalm is all about. In verse 7, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him, do not be indignant because of those who prosper in their ways, because of the person who carries out wicked schemes. In verse 8, it continues, Refrain from anger and turn from wrath, do not fret, it leads only to evil. The Bible tells us that we should not repay evil with evil but instead overcome evil with good. When we respond to evil with kindness, we resemble God and become true children of God. In verse 9, it says, For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord will inherit the land. So, wait upon the Lord, for you will inherit the land. You will prosper and flourish. In the place of your shame, God will give you double honor. In the place of your downfall, the Lord will lift you up with power and honor your life. Therefore, rest in the Lord and wait for Him, for He will do even more in your life. This is what the Word says in Psalm 37, verse 9. For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord will inherit the land. Verse 10 goes on to say, A little while, and the wicked will be no more, though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. In these verses, 10 and 11, we see that the meek will inherit the land. They will abound in peace and prosperity. However, in verse 12, it says, 
the wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. That's how the wicked act. They are filled with anger towards those who are in the presence of God, those who walk in integrity. Never compromise your life with God. Verse 13 tells us, The Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. God is not moved by the wicked, for he sees that their day of judgment is approaching. The wicked have drawn their swords and bent their bows to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those who walk in righteousness. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. Those who prepare a pit for you will fall into the same pit they have dug against your life. Know that you are protected by God. In verse 16, it says, Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. Look at how powerful this verse is. It is better to have little and be righteous than to possess the wealth of many wicked. What good is it for a person to have great riches but lose their soul? What good is it to have wealth but lack peace of mind? However, even with little in hand, no, my brothers and sisters, that little becomes much with God. God can multiply what seems insignificant. Verse 17 declares, For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the righteous, and their inheritance will endure forever. In verse 19, it says, In times of disaster they will not wither, in days of famine they will enjoy plenty. Look at this beautiful promise, my brothers and sisters. God is speaking to us in this verse. He is saying that in times of trouble, you will not be ashamed. The Lord will honor you, and your inheritance will remain forever. In times of crisis and calamity, you will prosper. The world may be in turmoil, but we are in Christ Jesus. With God, even in times of scarcity, we will be abundantly satisfied. Verse 20 continues, But the wicked will perish, though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed, they will go up in smoke. Look at how weighty this is. God is saying that the wicked will perish. Who are the wicked? They are those who do not serve the Lord, those who do not believe in God, those who blaspheme and ridicule His name. They are those who are distant from God. The verse says that the wicked will perish, and the enemies of the Lord will vanish like smoke. Showing compassion and borrowing without repaying is the act of the wicked, and it's not my words but the Bible, Psalm 37 verse 21. In verse 22, it says, For those blessed by the Lord will inherit the land, but those cursed by him will be destroyed. Here, we can see the blessing of Abraham, for God had said to Abraham that those who bless him will be blessed, and those who curse him will be cursed. This means that God is the shield of Abraham, and he is also your protective shield. In verse 23, it says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Let me tell you something important about this verse. It says that the steps of a good person are established by the Lord. What does this mean? It means that when you are in the presence of God, when you make decisions in His presence, He confirms your steps. If you start a business honestly and believe that God will prosper it, He will prosper it because the steps of a good person are confirmed by the Lord. As Psalm 1 also says, whatever the righteous person does will prosper. There is a blessing of prosperity in the life of a good person, whether it be a man or a woman. God has blessings in store for those who are good. So, be good to others, be good to yourself, because the steps of a good person will be confirmed by the Lord. Verse 24 goes even further and says, 
though they stumble, they will not fall, for the Lord upholds them with his hand. Look at this powerful verse. It shows that even if this man or woman, who is righteous in the presence of God, stumbles, they will not be cast down because the Lord holds them with his hand. If you fall, God will lift you up with his mighty power. The righteous may fall seven times, but God will raise them up eight times. The Lord will not allow you to remain prostrate, he will lift you up with his power. In verse 25, the psalmist declares, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. This means that there is prosperity in the lives of those who seek the Lord. In verse 26, it says, They are always generous and lend freely, their children will be a blessing. God is saying that your life will be blessed, and so will the lives of your children and your children's children. This is God's promise for our lives. Do not lose heart. In verse 27, it says, Turn from evil and do good, then you will dwell in the land forever. Verse 28 reminds us that the Lord loves justice and will not forsake his faithful ones. They are preserved forever, but the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and their tongue talks of what is just. Let's take this moment to pray and seek God's guidance. Amen. In verse 31, it says, The law of their God is in their hearts, their feet do not slip. Verse 32 acknowledges that the wicked plot against the righteous and seek to kill them, but in verse 33, it assures us that the Lord will not leave them in their hands. God will provide deliverance for us. God will provide deliverance for you. He will not leave you in the hands of the wicked, that's what verse 32 and verse 33 are saying. The Lord will not abandon you or condemn you when you are judged. Verse 34 encourages us to wait upon the Lord, to trust in Him, and to keep His ways. He will exalt us to inherit the land, and we will witness the removal of the wicked. Verse 35 describes how the wicked may appear to prosper with great power, like a green tree in its homeland. But their time will pass, and they will be no more. I searched, but they could not be found. Verse 37 urges us to observe the blameless and consider the upright, for their future is one of peace. On the other hand, transgressors will be destroyed, and the relics of the wicked will vanish. To conclude, verse 39 and 40 remind us that the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble, for they trust in Him. Psalm 37 reveals that God is for the righteous and against the wicked. It assures us that the righteous, the meek, will inherit the land and prosper in it. Meanwhile, those who practice iniquity will face annihilation by God. This psalm is a guarantee that the righteous will experience a season of prosperity, peace, and blessings on this earth. Therefore, let us embrace and claim all the blessings recorded in Psalm 37 for our lives. Let us pray together, seeking to possess every blessing outlined in Psalm 37. May the promises of God manifest abundantly in our lives. In this prayer, close your eyes and join me as we pray, O Holy Spirit of God, here in your presence, we have just read Psalm 37. In this psalm, Lord, we see and confirm that you are a God of prosperity. We have read verse by verse, and we understand that Psalm 37 brings blessings of spiritual and material abundance to those who seek you, to those who worship you. Humbly, 
We ask that you grant us the spiritual blessings and gifts outlined in Psalm 37 in our lives. Come and prosper us in this land, bless our health, our finances, our emotions. Bless our families, our homes. Lord, protect us, deliver us, guard us, and defend us in the name of Jesus. May all the spiritual blessings recorded in Psalm 37 be confirmed in our lives for the glory and praise of your name, God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, send your provision into the life of the woman who listens to me and the life of the man who hears me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, grant us your blessing of prosperity. Grant us your peace. May the Lord grant us the desires of our hearts according to your will, and may your name be glorified, Lord, in the blessings we receive in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and ask all these things. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thanks be to God. All honor and glory be to you, Lord. Amen. My brother and sister, may God bless you. As I come to the end of this message, I want to invite those of you who haven't subscribed yet to the channel to do so. And to those who are already subscribed, I encourage you to share this video with a friend so that they too can subscribe to the channel and let the name of Jesus be glorified through these prayers. Sending you a big hug, and may the peace of the Lord be with you. Remember, you were born to overcome and live out every promise of God.